Avec la parution en 1979 de In 1979, a major book was published, Principles of Responsibility, which set the basis for a new type of ethics. We're going to analyze the basis of Jonas's ethics and think about the interest for sustainable development. Jonas's environmental ethics are based on responsibility, accountability, which normally finds its origin in past obligations and present obligations and bears on present actions. According to Jonas, responsibility now finds its origin in the future and the obligations are expressed in the present time. The change is based on the threat posed by the power of technology made by men. Human actions must be limited because we have an obligation versus the future generations whereby we need to be responsible, act responsibly today. The nature of responsibility is therefore directly linked with our power of action because we have become dangerous for ourselves. Man is dangerous because of the power of techniques created by man. Man controls nature with techniques he does not control. The greatest example is that shown by the impact of human actions on the climate, which shows that societies are totally incapable of uh, acting in a responsible way as much as far as the environment is concerned. Therefore, ethics uh, must intervene in a legitimate way to control and limit the action of individuals that must become responsible of their actions. How? Well, with the principle of responsibility, which uh, indicates how to act based on an obligation act in such a way that the effects of your action are compatible with the preservation of an authentically human life on Earth. What are the implications of this principle of responsibility? First of all, present generations have the duty to anticipate the threats that will derive from their power. Powers will be exerted on the future and current generations must act in a responsible way towards their offspring. This means equity between the generations with an asymmetry because current generations have rights and obligations towards future generations because they are aware of the consequences of their actions, whereas future generations can neither claim rights nor respect obligation obligations towards current generations. There is therefore a break in the normally applied reciprocity in rights and duties. This is the reason why we cannot think in terms of intergeneration justice based on a justice of redistribution between generations. All environmental assets which have been irreversibly destroyed by the actions of current generations will not be exchanged with something else between generations in order to compensate for the loss. Only the use of the principle of responsibility will be able ex ante to limit major damage done to nature. A second indirect obligation is expressed towards nature, and this is John, what Jonas calls environmental justice. Na natural assets are the object of obligations because uh, they contribute to the preservation of existence, of the existence of humankind, and because they have an intrinsic value which is independent of the way they are being used. One should note here that the, all the values associated with natures must be preserved for future generations, all generations in total. The well-being of future generations depends clearly on the preservation of nature and the value of nature. Jonas writes solidarity in destiny between man and nature, which has uh, been rediscovered uh, or discovered recently uh, through danger, allows us to rediscover the autonomous dignity held by nature and encourages us to show respect for its integrity beyond the use that can be made of nature. There is therefore solidarity between living beings, human and non-humans, which should not be endangered because it will guarantee survival of all species, including man. Nature, as an object for human responsibility, is directly included in the uh, scope of ethics for philosophers. The ethical scope of uh, responsibility is global because it contains the interdependence between human, uh, human species and environmental systems. And therefore, although nature is not in itself 
a right, an entity which has rights, it cannot be excluded from the scope of philosophical teaching. Environment, Jonas's environmental ethics are opened towards the biosphere. Not only should they help preserve humanity, humankind, but also they should preserve life, all kinds of forms of life, human and non-human. This leads us to egocentric options where solidarity between living beings plays an essential role. Now, let us look at how the principle of responsibility may be integrated in sustainable development. The obligation to preserve humankind from disappearance is a categorical duty and obligation throughout Jonas's work. It means that not only do we need to preserve nature, but also limit the power of action of current generations. In the perspective of uh, sustainable development, how can we make sure that an authentically human life can be preserved on Earth? According to Jonas, this obligation will be dis difficult to comply with if the lifestyle of developed countries does not change. The finiteness of the planet and the ecological threat materialized by the vulnerability of nature seem to impose two very strong constraints. Therefore, we should think about using a logic of self-limitation as a uh, requirement in order to protect environmental resources uh, for future generations. According to Jonas, this means uh, accepting severe restriction uh, actions versus our unleashed consumption habits in order to lower the lifestyle of uh, Western countries in the uh, current period who are so voracious that and produce so much waste that they are threatening the environment. And therefore, Jonas will lead us to a major change. The obligation towards the future determines the existence of some form of compensation between the uh, wealthiest uh, generations towards the uh, not so wealthy generation. And this means also that we have to make an effort in terms of consumption. This determines what effort should be made by the current generations. There will be a redistribution between present or current generations and future generations for whom we should uh, preserve nature so that they can inherit nature as a legacy. Through the responsibility principle, we can limit consumption and preserve the integrity of nature and contribute to the preservation of an authentically human form of life on Earth.